Welcome. Today we are going to be discussing the enlightened despots of Europe, Frederick the Great of Prussia, Joseph II of Austria, and Catherine the Great of Russia here at Learning the Social Sciences. Enlightenment philosophers pushed for numerous reforms from politics to economics to society. Many railed against absolute leaders who held exorbitant power. Rousseau, John Locke, Voltaire, and many others called out for reforms to be made and for the people to have a say in their government. Although enlightened despots continued to maintain their absolute power, they did make changes based on the philosophies of the time within their countries on a political and social level. Frederick the Great reigned in Prussia, a growing nation with its capital in Berlin. He loved and embraced the Enlightenment. He was a patron of the arts and he even had Voltaire live at his palace. He's known for modernizing Prussia's bureaucracy, military, taxation system, and civil service system. Frederick was able to control the price of grain so that the people would be able to survive even during poor harvests. Furthermore, he assisted poor farmers by creating more farmland by diverting the Oder River. Frederick demonstrated religious tolerance and had a Protestant church, a Catholic cathedral, and a Jewish synagogue all within a few blocks of each other in Berlin. However, he was noted for having some negative statements against some religious groups, and he did not appoint Catholics to high positions within the government. He is also somebody who was harsh to the Polish people after he took their territory, and he is somebody who also was engaged in numerous warfare. He was, of course, involved in the Seven Years' War and in the war when he went up against Maria Theresa of Austria taking Silesia. Now, Frederick the Great did a lot of reforms. However, some of them were pulled back after his death. Frederick the Great stated, The greatest and noblest pleasure which men can have in this world is to discover new truths, and the next is to shake off old prejudices. Joseph II was the eldest son of Maria Theresa, the only female ruler of the Habsburg territories. Although his mother was known for having some enlightened moments, like assisting children in getting a smallpox inoculation and reforming the education system, she was also noted for trying to exile Protestants and Jews from the land she controlled. Joseph II started to make his mark when he became Maria Theresa's co-ruler and stated that he would step down if she continued her intolerant religious policies. Due to her son's persistence, she changed her policies. Joseph then established schools for religious minorities, including Jewish citizens, and offered scholarships to poor students. Joseph would go on to reform the legal system and torture the death penalty and other brutal punishments, and he would grant freedom to the serfs in 1781. However, the landlords would resist the newly granted freedom and would eventually have the policy reversed. To make the tax system more equitable, he created a land tax that forced anyone who owned land to pay taxes, including the nobility. That is something that France should have considered prior to the French Revolution. Although many of his reforms were not long-standing due to his successor, successor reversing many of them, and others actually disappearing during his own reign, he did end censorship of the press and the theater, and he did expand education for his people. Joseph II is quoted as saying, Here lies a prince whose intentions were pure, but who had the misfortune to see all his plans collapse. Catherine the Great was a German princess who managed to become the sole leader of Russia after a civil war and after the death of her husband, Tsar Peter III. Although she was classified as an enlightened despot, her reforms were limited as she mainly made her mark by supporting the arts and sciences and by also supporting philosophers. For example, when Diderot ran into trouble in France due to his publishing and writing of the Encyclopedia, she offered her protection and a place for him to write in Russia. Like the other enlightened monarchs of her time, Catherine is also noted for improving the education system. This project included making an institute just for girls to be able to have an education. 
Catherine had the longest reign of any female ruler in Russian history, serving over 30 years. She admired the reforms of Peter the Great and also wanted to continue the modernization projects that he had began, moving Russia further to the West culturally. She continued to reduce the power of the nobility while also dividing Russia into provinces and districts. She also instituted various economic reforms over her 30 years. Catherine is quoted as to saying, the laws ought to be so framed as to secure the safety of every citizen as much as possible. Political liberty does not consist in the notion that a man may do whatever he pleases. Liberty is the right to do whatever the law allows. The equality of the citizens consists in that they should all be subject to the same laws. Well, this has been a short biography on the enlightened despots of Europe. If you have any questions or concerns, please leave them below. And always remember to like and subscribe. Bye-bye.